Next up, the rowers setting out to travel 3,000 miles across the Atlantic. The trio of athletes are taking part in the Atlantic Challenge, starting in the Canary Islands and using nothing but their own strength and endurance, powering their way to Antigua and Barbuda. It's a delight to be joined by two of the daring team, Jules Palin and Amy Wood. Thanks for coming in. And Jules, tell me about this challenge. Just how tough is it? It is said to be one of the toughest endurance challenges out there. Um, it's, it's not like winning a marathon or I can't think of anything what you've just talked about, all the endurance things you can do, but it's just, in, it's just ongoing. It's, it's never ending. It's there. You can't get off the boat. So it's 3,000 miles. It's just incredible. <laughs> a lot of people, Amy, would be daunted by that and think that is the last thing I want to put myself through. So why have you decided to embark on it? I think it's the ultimate rowing challenge. So um, having gone through competitive fine boat rowing to then say, well, what is actually next in it in kind of a rowing challenge and the Atlantic is kind of the ultimate rowing challenge, which is why we're taking it on. Yeah. I, I went to try and do um, Women's Henley a couple of years ago now. And this is why I'm doing this challenge is because I started to train nine sessions a week as well as being a single mom and having my own business. and. I found that I got to a certain point with my coach and with, through injury and things like that and we still didn't even get to compete. We didn't even qualify because I'm too short. No. <laughs> I'm not rare sized. So um, this was one thing you can compete against other, you can compete against males, you can compete against all people of all, all ages. It's sort of a real leveller. It's a mental challenge as well as a physical challenge. We've got the two of you here, Amy, who's the third member of your team? Um, so our friend Mark Seeley, uh, he's based in Somerset. So yeah, he's our third member. Um, how important is the relationship between the, the three of you, Jules? We were talking about it on the way over, actually, yeah. weren't we? Um, so we've had a year together. I've known Amy since I taught her how to row. She was at Sixth Form Defence College. Um, but we mark, we introduced sort of April last April year. Time, yeah. We recruited, and um, but it's really important. We've had lots of team days. We've been out on the water, lots of meetings, lots of chats on the phone as well, and building that special bond. And we were saying if we'd had to have somebody else come in, I think that'd be really difficult now because you have to build the bond and the trust is really important. Trust each other with your lives. How, how much are you training at the moment? So training is quite difficult at the minute because of weather. So mm. we have our boat and we've had it for about six months. So we're really lucky to be in that position. But, you know, people keep saying, you know, what are you doing? Why are you trying to get on the water when the weather's so bad? But we're just desperate to get out and row and make time, make use of the time we've had with our boat. Um, at the minute, we spend a lot of time fundraising, so gaining corporate sponsorship, which we still require a little bit of to get to the start line, um, but also raising money for one of our charity's blood bikes. Um, so training isn't going as much as we want at the minute. So as soon as March comes and there's a bit better weather, we'll be straight out on the water. But training also takes a lot of, it's not just the training, it could be weights, it could be on the boat, it could be also the courses. So we've had to do a lot of courses with the RYA, so VHF course, Sea Survival. There's lots to think about. Oh. We're going to talk a bit more <laughs> in just a moment. There are loads more to come from these two. See you in a sec. Welcome back to the show where we celebrate Nottinghamshire sport. I'm still joined by two rowers who this year will take on one of the sport's toughest challenges, rowing 3,000 miles across the Atlantic. It's Jules Palin and Amy Wood. Um, Jules, aside from the physical effort that I'm sure is going to be involved in training for that and then completing it, there's a lot of preparation that goes into getting ready for that. What do you need to tick off to, to, to do before that point? Oh, we had a meeting at the weekend, didn't we? About <laughs> To go oh, um, so just my one of my jobs is to sort out all the certificates for everything going forward. So you need a certificate for your radio license, you need a certificate from the dentist, you need your doctor certificate, you need oh a certificate for the boat to say it's seaworthy. It's, oh, there's just about 20 different things just that you need and each one of those is going to be difficult to source. All the courses, minimum hours to do, what else yeah. is there? We have to do 120 hours minimum on the boat and we have to have evidence of doing those as well. So kind of logs on applications to say this is where we've been and the waypoints we've reached, photos, video evidence of that we've done those. There's so many prerequisites that are required to make sure that you're as ready as possible so that you can have a safe and a fast crossing. Just proving the amount of calories you've got on board so you have to be scrutinised and lay out all your equipment, all the food, prove you've got enough calories per person on board 
for the amount of days you need. It's what, just, well, what's on the menu then? What, oh, do you know what you're going to be having? Have um, you got any requests? Amy's in charge of food. There's quite, there's quite a good variety out there. So it is freeze-dried food. Um, so you just add water to hydrate it. Whether it's hot water or cold water, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's a lot of spaghetti bolognese, a lot of curries. Um, generally, they taste okay, don't they? Um, I mean, you'd much rather have fresh food, I think. And especially when you've been eating them for weeks, I'm sure we'll be rather eating but. fresh food. <laughs> but I think it could be a lot worse. So. Spaghetti bolognese and curry sounds quite nice, doesn't it? <laughs> In a mush. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the one thing, I guess, yours, is that you're setting off on your birthday. Yeah. How do you think that will be, that experience yeah. of, will you be relishing it or would you rather be sitting inside? Well, we were thinking we were setting off on the 11th of December for quite some time, which would have been seasick on my birthday. So mm. I'd rather set off on my birthday and have all the klaxons going and the crowds waving us off. That was going to be super special, especially it's my 40th as well. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what do you anticipate the biggest challenge being, Amy? I think through the dark nights, just being able to mentally carry on. Um, you know, especially if you're rowing by yourself when it's dark, I think if you start thinking about things too much, you know, it could be easy, oh, I could take a 10 minute break here. It's having that mental capacity to just keep going and row for the sake of everyone else, knowing that everyone's gonna be putting in 100% effort throughout the whole journey. Um, just maintaining that kind of mental strength throughout the dark times, I think that's gonna be really difficult. Some people struggle with the, the dark nights, not knowing where the waves are coming from. So in the daytime, you can see a wave, you can anticipate it, you can brace yourself, adjust yourself and move with it. At night time, you're not gonna be able to see a wave because you might not have a light on the boat because of glare. The stars might have been clouded over and so literally it'll be pitch black. I'm staggered by, by what you guys are doing. <laughs> if you wanna find out more about them, they are the Transatlantic Trio. Thank you so much for coming in and speaking to Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Next, um,